If you want to support the channel then please check out my Patreon page to gain access to exclusive videos, take part in Q&As and watch my retrospectives before they go live on YouTube. Early this year we saw the return of director Richard Stanley with his adaptation of Lovecraft's short story The Colour Out of Space. Richard has been out of the director's chair for over two decades and finally he was given the chance to direct a feature film again. Colour Out of Space was produced for roughly $10 million and was given limited screenings in late January of this year in the USA and in the UK in late February. Box office wise it hasn't done very well but its key market is home video and streaming. The 4K Blu-ray was recently released in the USA and is coming to regular Blu-ray in the UK on the 6th of April with a fancy collector's edition from HMV. Since its release it has been given mostly positive reviews from the critics with many praising its photography, performances, direction and musical score by Colin Stetson. The short story Colour Out of Space was written by H.P. Lovecraft in 1927. The tale is set in the fictional town of Arkham, Massachusetts where a meteorite crashes and poisons every living being nearby and mutates the vegetation, animals and people. The animals and humans are driven mad, insane and eventually die. This was one of Lovecraft's personal favourites of his short stories and critics generally consider The Colour Out of Space one of his best works and the first with his trademark blending of science fiction and horror. Director Richard Stanley's mother Penny Miller was a huge fan of H.P. Lovecraft. She read Lovecraft's work to Stanley when he was young at the age of roughly 12 years old he read The Colour Out of Space which he claims has been part of his psychological makeup. But he rarely agreed with the views of the author as H.P. Lovecraft had such a horrible view on mankind and was very racist in his material. Richard Stanley nurtured the idea of bringing his version of H.P. Lovecraft's short story The Colour Out of Space to the screen since 2011 but had difficulty finding financing. Things changed in September 2015 when it was announced that the production company Spectre Vision had come on board to produce. Nicholas Cage was looking for other projects and Spectre Vision who Cage had worked with on Mandy suggested Colour Out of Space and he loved the concept and was very familiar with Lovecraft's work. Producer Josh Waller who also cameos in the film as the sheriff announced that it would begin production in early 2019 with shooting taking place in Portugal doubling for New England. Some of the cast members hadn't heard of Richard Stanley as he had been off the radar for a long time. They read up on his exploits on the set of the island of Dr Moreau, reports of Richard being a bit mental, his use of witchcraft and heavy pot smoking and were a little amused by his antics and I'm sure some were probably unsure if he could do the job. Richard did admit he was a little worried about returning to directing and dealing with a large crew but once he was behind the camera he was back into the swing of things and all the shots he needed came to his head very quickly. Richard strived to do a lot of in-camera effects. Once the animals and humans begin to mutate in true body horror fashion he used animatronics, prosthetics and miniatures to achieve the effects he wanted with elements of CGI applied to polish off the visuals. For scenes that were impossible to do within camera, computer effects were used such as the mutated mantis that emerges from the well, the use of light as it moves around the farm and visions of the alien world. As the book details a colour that has never been seen before by humans, it's essentially an alien colour they chose to represent it with magenta, a colour that does not exist from a single wavelength of light as part of the colour spectrum of visible light, rather it is an extra spectral colour that ends up dominating the movie. For the film's plot, Nathan Gardner, played by Nicolas Cage, has moved his family to a rural farm where he attempts to grow tomatoes and raise alpacas for their milk. His daughter Lavinia, played by Madeleine Arthur, performs rituals in hopes of restoring her mother's health as she is recovering from breast cancer and she is spotted by Ward, played by Elliot Knight, who is surveying the quality of the water as there are plans for a hydroelectric dam. Teresa, played by Jolie Richardson, is a financial advisor who is losing clients due to the poor internet signal in their remote location. Her son Benny, played by Brendan Meyer, hangs around with Ezra, played by Tommy Chong, a local hermit and they both spend their time getting high. His youngest son Jack is withdrawn and only interacts with their family dog. One night the family are surprised by a vibrant glowing light as a meteor crash lands in their front yard. The rock emits an unearthly colour and it lets off a horrific smell. The next morning the meteor is no longer glowing and is crumbling to dust. Ward along with the mayor and the sheriff arrive to check it out but don't take Nathan's concerns about it seriously. Later Nathan and Lavinia witness the meteor being struck by several bolts of lightning and things begin to subtly change around them. 
Jack becomes obsessed with the well, which stands a few feet from where the meteor landed, and begins to hear voices coming from it. The plants around the house begin growing and changing, and insects mutate. As Teresa prepares dinner for the family, she falls into a trance and loses her concentration and cuts her fingers off. As Nathan takes her to the hospital, the kids are left alone and things begin to take a turn for the worse. When the film was announced, I was intrigued for two reasons. One, a proper Lovecraft adaptation, and the other, the return of director Richard Stanley. Richard's career has fascinated me since watching the documentary Lost Soul about the making of The Island of Dr. Moreau. The film would have put him on the map, but he was replaced as director and the production fell into chaos, and the eventual completed film was a mess, and Richard's career was left in tatters and he disappeared from Hollywood. I've discussed more of Richard and his work in my review of Hardware, the film that most people know and is regarded as a cult classic. The first thing that strikes you when you watch it is the beautiful photography the film has. It's just rich with colour and has great depth to the visuals. With its heavy use of magenta, it really gives the film a fantastical and cosmic look. But as we've seen many movies in recent years trying to capture the look of the 80s, especially when it comes to the horror genre, they make use of similar colours to give it this retro look that you could argue takes away some of its uniqueness with it striving to create an alien colour, but as the colours become more intense near the end, it really becomes a visual explosion of colours which is highly impressive. I've seen a number of films over the years that deal with the themes and ideas of Lovecraft's work, especially John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness and the recent film Annihilation, which borrows ideas from colour out of space but I don't think I've seen a true adaptation of his material, and Colour Out of Space seems to be the closest to following the work of the famous author. With it being a short story, it does make it difficult to expand to a feature-length film. Thankfully for the most part, Richard Stanley and co-writer Scarlett Amaris have managed to do that despite there being some issues. The meteorite hits the farm very early on, but it does take a while for its effects on the family to develop. We get a sense they are falling into a daze, time is passing by without them knowing, they begin to lose their temper over little things, then suddenly they calm down like their fit of rage never happened. Once the mutations come into full swing, it's like seeing John Carpenter's The Thing, as the mother and son become infused into one. It's pretty nasty and disturbing imagery, and seeing the alpacas become all twisted and mashed together, it certainly delivers on the horror. It's not a straight out horror as it does throw in humour, thanks to Nicolas Cage who provides his usual over the top style. It comes across as cool and calm and charming then suddenly swings into fits of anger that is sometimes threatening but also humorous and he gets some of the best dialogue. The role just seems to fit him so well. The other cast members such as Madeline and Brandon who play as oldest kids really bring across a believability to their performances as they attempt to get their heads around the situation and try to understand how the effects of the light is starting to affect them and everything around them. The score by Colin Stetson really impressed me. Colin has worked on a number of low budget features and TV shows and also credited as working on Red Dead Redemption 2 mainly working as a saxophone player. His score to Colour Out of Space is full-on electronic in pure 80s fashion, very atmospheric and haunting creating an unsettling soundscape to the film, with sound effects worked into the music, giving the impression that he is going for something experimental, and it works wonders. Also it has elements of music that feel ripped out of a fantasy film, definitely worth checking out. The recent 4K version which comes bundled with a regular Blu-ray comes with deleted scenes and a short but enjoyable making of, which covers its early production through to shooting and its visual effects design. The deleted scenes on the disc expand on a few key scenes, but don't really add much to the story, and you can tell why they were cut to keep the running time down to an acceptable length. I do feel however the film's running time is a tad too long. 10 minutes could have been trimmed to improve its pacing, I would say in the middle act. Sadly it's missing a commentary by Richard Stanley, the guy's a talking machine, and it would have been great to have more of an insight from him discussing the story and the return to filmmaking. I'm sure there will be collector's editions released in the future, but for now the special features are a bit light. When it comes to the picture quality, the 4K transfer doesn't have HDR applied to it, it's just a pure 4K image. I'm not sure why HDR wasn't used, but it could be the case of messing with the colours causing unwanted saturation your guess is good as mine. So in comparison to the regular 1080p Blu-ray, the 4K transfer does obviously offer a bit more detail in the picture, with the film being natively shot in 4K, so you don't have to worry about it being an upscale. The film comes with a DTS HD master audio mix, no Dolby Atmos, but that shouldn't cause concern, as the surround sound mix is very impressive with an effective use of surround sound channels, making the score and sound effects fully immerse you into the film, a very good effort from a low budget production. 
I certainly recommend the film if you are a fan of the genre and Lovecraft's work. Despite the good efforts to expand a short story, it does feel a bit thin in areas as we the audience are just waiting for another disaster to happen for the family, there doesn't seem to be a great urgency as things get worse, the pace doesn't speed up which does dilute some of the tension and is unfortunately the weakest aspect of the film, but it shouldn't affect your overall enjoyment of the movie. Colour Out of Space I would say is Richard Stanley's most commercial movie without a doubt, of his small catalogue of features, with it being based on a popular story and having Nicolas Cage in the lead. The film demonstrates Richard still has a strong visual style and is a competent director. He doesn't appear rusty or out of touch. It's a huge shame his career was cut short by Hollywood and the politics that come with filmmaking. There are many years lost where we could have seen him move on to larger projects and bigger budgeted features to really push his creativity. Hopefully this movie is a turning point for him to continue his love of Lovecraft with further adaptations and for him to explore other genres for movie fans to enjoy. <laughs>